Hi, my name is Candace, and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to share today's video with you. I was absolutely thrilled when Tiffany reached out to me to be part of her AAPI Thrift Flip Challenge this month. I have been a big fan of her channel for so long. I love her style and her upcycles are incredible. So here's Tiffany to introduce herself. Hi, my name is Tiffany and you can find me on most platforms at Little Toe. I love sewing and DIYs, but I especially love upcycling and showing people how you can take old forgotten items and give them a new life. I am Malaysian Chinese and I am so excited to be working with Candice on this to help elevate Asian voices. Candice makes such beautiful effortless pieces so I am so thrilled that she wanted to do this collab with me. Her designs and pattern making are always on point so I am so excited to see what she makes. So for this collab we each had a budget of $10 to buy something at the thrift store and send it to the other person to upcycle with. I sent Tiffany this green dress with cherry blossoms and also a couple of things from my stash and she sent me a couple of really fun things too and I'm really excited to share what I made with them. So let's get started. So here is what she sent me. I already love it. I haven't even like pulled it out of the box. She said this dress is from her stash. Or wait, I guess this is the dress. This is a broderie anglaise top. I haven't known Tiffany that long, but she totally nailed my style and aesthetic. This is so perfect. And this is the second piece. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Definitely looks like an 80s or 90s dress. It's got like big shoulder pads, but there's a good amount of fabric to work with and I'm really excited to start working on this. Here's what the floral dress looked like on. It was a little bit too small for me, but there was quite a bit of fabric because there were the puffy sleeves and some ruching at the waist. And here's what the white button up looked like on. It was pretty roomy, but there wasn't a ton of fabric, so I knew I would have to make a top with it. I started with the floral dress and I took it all apart. The razor is my new favorite seam ripping tool. You do have to be very careful though because it is super sharp. All right, I have wet hair, but I want to start right away and my baby is sleeping, so it is prime time. I'm thinking I'm going to use one of my absolute all-time favorite patterns, which is the Vicky Sews Teresa pattern. It is a bustier style dress, and I'm just gonna use the bodice portion for both of the pieces that Tiffany sent me. I hack patterns a lot and that's kind of how I got into drafting patterns is by hacking so I thought it'd be cool to show you how he one pattern and create two pretty different looks with it. So that is my plan. I'm gonna go dig that pattern out and get my pieces cut out. It took me quite a while to Tetris the pieces onto the fabric that I have and it just fit. I didn't want to cut into the skirt for the bodice pieces at all because I had some special details in mind that I wanted to keep extra fabric for. Once I had all my bodice pieces cut out, I applied interfacing to them. I've been using this little trick lately where I faux block fuse them. I put them all in a big piece of interfacing and then press them with this special press cloth. And then I just cut them all out. And I find that's way easier than recutting all of those pieces in interfacing and fusing them separately. Then it was time to sew them all together and I could honestly sew this pattern with my eyes closed at this point. I think this is the sixth or seventh time I've sewn this pattern. This is what the front bodice was looking like after it was all sewn up. She's super cute. I also cut some lining out of a linen cotton blend that I had. And then I got out my boning to add some boning to the lining. I just cut the pieces to size for all of the seams on the bottom part of the bodice and then I sewed them on. Then I took my lining and placed it wrong sides together with the bodice and attached them together at the underwire portion with this bias tape. I actually ended up using black, not white. I also added in some foam cups and I made these ones. If you're interested in how I did that, I have a reel on Instagram which explains it all. Here are the back panels. I created this cute faux shirring effect by sewing some elastic channels and inserting quarter inch elastic inside of them. I just got bodice pieces sewn together and I have all the panels sewn up. It hurt my brain a bit trying to figure out the construction, but what I ended up doing was using those finished faux shirred back panels and I sandwiched them between the bodice and the lining. And then I just finished the top edge of the front portion of the bodice with bias tape. And I think it's looking great. Here's a quick look at what the bodice looks like. The boning is completely hidden on the inside of the lining and everything was closed up neatly with some bias tape on the top. So now that I have my bodice all sewn up, it's time to create those gorgeous little ruffly straps. I am thinking that they are some sort of circular ruffle or like a flounce, not a regular like gathered rectangle. So I am going to go reference my 
favorite sewing resource, good old YouTube, and figure out what I need to make. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna do some kind of spiral ruffle because that's going to conserve the most fabric. And I'm not totally sure how I'm going to actually make the straps, but we will figure that out when we get there. After watching a few YouTube tutorials, I did settle on doing a spiral ruffle and I made it about two to three inches wide. I wanted to give myself a little bit of extra in case I made a mistake. So I drafted that all out on paper and then I cut it out from the remaining fabric that I had. And here is what it looked like. Then I had to dig out my serger manual to find out how to do a rolled hem and change all the settings for that. A rolled hem because doing a double fold would be super fiddly. So anyways, it took me a while to get this rethreaded properly, but we got there eventually and sewing them was an actual breeze. Okay, that worked so much better than I even thought it would. My old serger had quite a lot of trouble using it to do rolled hem. But this was super easy and this is a very curved piece. So I'm planning on doing maybe two or three straps with these. So they will lie kind of like this. One will be here and then I want one off the shoulder and maybe if I have enough, a third one. So I wasn't sure how I'm gonna finish the straps but I think what I'll do is I have this much bias tape left. So I will use this and sew it open right sides together onto the inner edge of this ruffle and then fold it over. I think this will work well because bias is a little bit stretchy and it's got a little bit more structure than this really drapey ruffle. So that's what we're gonna do. That method worked surprisingly well. So I inserted the straps and then folded the bias tape down to hand sew it all closed. This is how the straps will lay and I think they're super cute. Then I pinned my bodice onto the dress form and grabbed the skirt portion and just pinned it on just to see what it was looking like. And then I got it ready to attach to the bodice. I used the entire original skirt and after running some gathering stitches through it, I gathered it to the length of the new bodice, sewed it together at the waist, and then left the center back seam open to insert the original zipper again. So here are the current options. I definitely want to take the length up to like mid thigh and then use the bottom of the skirt to make an exposed ruffle. So it'll be about maybe like this length. I'm going to try that out and see how it looks. I decided I wanted about seven inches off the bottom of the skirt. So I cut that off and divided it into two strips and then sewed those all together into one big loop and finish the edges with a rolled hem and then gathered it all up so that I could attach it to the bottom of the skirt. I finished the hem of the skirt with a baby hem before attaching the ruffle and I just placed it wrong side on right side on top of the skirt to attach it. And then I started working on the white top. Instead of seam ripping, I just cut this one up because I was sick of seam ripping at this point. I had to be so careful with pattern Tetris for this one because I really didn't have that much fabric. And I was doing the same ruffle flounces again, so you need quite a big piece for those. I miraculously fit all of the bodice pieces on the bodice of the actual shirt, and then I used the sleeves for the ruffle flounces. I also did a similar shirt piece for the back. I sewed the lining yesterday. This is a thrifted sheet that was also my son's Halloween costume last year. Um, I cut two holes in it for eyes and a mouth. <laughs> so the sheet was pretty intact, and so I had lots left over to make a lining. So I'm now going to sew together the the main part and then I am going to attach them. So let's sew this part together. This fabric was absolutely perfect for this top and I'm so happy with how it turned out. So it's looking really good so far. I think the fit's gonna be perfect. My plan now is to... And here's a bunch of rambling about how I don't know how I'm gonna finish the top. I had wanted to show you a lot more of the process and how it was put together, but I ended up doing a lot of trial and error with this one because I wanted to use the original button placket as the back closure, but I couldn't figure out a way to do that neatly, so I abandoned that idea. My seam ripper came out quite a lot, but it was all worth it in the end because I love the end result. Don't mind my crazy mom bun, but it is the night before I have to have these done and I am almost there. I am so excited with how these turned out and I am even more excited to show Tiffany and see what she made too. Hi Tiffany! Hi Candace! 
I'm so excited to finally like meet you. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm such a big fan of your work, so I am also really excited to meet you. And I have been a huge fan of your channel for like a year, honestly. I, I love your channel and like your upcycles are so amazing. I'm super excited to show you what I made. I actually made two pieces because you sent me two things. I've kind of underestimated the time that I had, so I just finished up like last night as well, so. Well, I'm so excited to see. Okay, so can you just remind me what you sent me? Okay, I found this very dated dress. Actually, it was in my stash. Like I've had it for a while and I've been wanting to upcycle it, but when you told me mm -hmm. that you liked like florals and then also like neutrals so i was like yeah. let me send this so it's a very dated dress and then i also sent you a like white kind of like eyelet lace top um, okay so you can open the video now and take a look at what i made <gasps> candace oh my god the dress is so cute it's like a different dress <laughs> that's not the same dress i love the bodice i love a structured bodice that looks fantastic Wait, I, I love the lowy sleeve. The ruffled hem, the ruffled hem. Oh, wait, that dress is so beautiful. Well, okay, I'm gonna move on to the top. Oh, I would buy that. I would buy that at a store. Like, it looks like Cezanne. Candace. So gorgeous, I'm obsessed with this top. Like, and you can pair it with so many different things. Ah, oh, you did such a good job. I love, I oh, love both pieces. You. So Tiffany, I just wanted to say thank you so much for reaching out to me to be part of this collab. I had so much fun. You are so welcome and I had so much fun doing this collab with you. Bye! Bye! So I hope you enjoyed today's video and liked the upcycles. I had so much fun with this collaboration and definitely want to do some more thrift flips in the future. If you liked this video, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Bye!